It's been more than a year since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and the world has been closely watching how the situation has developed. Before the invasion, President Biden had warned Russian President Putin of economic consequences like none he's ever seen, hoping to prevent the conflict. However, as we all know, Russia went ahead with its assault. The U.S. and many other countries responded by imposing sanctions and trade restrictions on Russia, hoping to weaken its finances, isolate its economy, and make Putin's supporters pariahs. The initial impact of these sanctions was quite dramatic, with the ruble crashing, the banking system shuddering, and companies worldwide halting their exports to Russia. But as we fast forward to today, it seems that Russia has weathered the storm better than many anticipated. How did this happen, you ask? Well, Russia's oil and gas exports played a significant role, along with deft maneuvering by its central bank. Additionally, Russia has been able to sneak some banned technology through trade with China and other countries, which has helped its economy bounce back. Now make no mistake, Western sanctions have had a deep impact on Russia's economy and military, causing friction among its elites. However, it hasn't been enough to change Putin's calculus or end the war. It's a complicated situation that shows no signs of resolution anytime soon. One of the biggest failures in the effort to put pressure on Russia was the West's reluctance to go after the country's most significant source of income. Yes, you guessed it. Oil and gas exports. While the U.S. quickly banned imports of Russian energy, Europe's dependence on pipelines from Siberia made it much harder to break free. In fact, Europe imported about 40% of its gas and a quarter of its oil from Russia, which is a pretty significant number. This made it challenging for the West to impose harsher sanctions on Russia without hurting their own economies. It's a classic case of being caught between a rock and a hard place. Of course, experts agree that going after Russia's energy exports would have had a severe impact on their economy. But it's important to note that the reluctance to do so may have also allowed Putin to believe that the West wasn't willing to go all in on the sanctions. It's interesting to note that soon after Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the European Commission proposed cutting Russian gas imports by two-thirds by the end of 2022. This was a pretty bold move, considering how dependent Europe was on Russian gas. However, it seems that the proposal didn't gain much traction, as German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and others dismissed the idea of an immediate oil and gas boycott. Their concerns were valid, as cutting off Russian gas imports could have left Europe in the dark, especially during the winter months. Moreover, with global inflation already soaring, an immediate boycott could have exacerbated the situation. So, it was a tricky decision to make, and it's easy to see why there was some reluctance to go down that road. Despite the Western sanctions and restrictions, the sharp rise in global oil prices in the spring created a cash bonanza for Russia. And Europe's continued purchases of Russian gas contributed to this economic boost, rather than draining the Kremlin's war chest as intended. In other words, instead of hurting Russia's economy, Europe was actually helping to fill it anew. This may have been an unintended consequence of Europe's reluctance to cut off Russian gas imports, but it's an important one to consider. It goes to show that the geopolitical landscape is complex and that every decision has its consequences, intended or otherwise. Of course, reducing Europe's dependence on Russian gas is still a worthwhile goal, especially in light of Russia's aggressive behavior towards Ukraine. However, it's clear that achieving this goal will require a delicate balancing act to ensure that both the economy and people's well-being are taken into account. When Russia's ongoing war with Ukraine started in February, it seems that nobody in Putin's inner circle expected it to last more than a few months. And yet, here we are almost a year later, and the conflict is still raging on. So what's driving Putin's determination to continue this war? According to Ilya Matvev, a political scientist and academic, Putin simply can't afford to lose. Losing is not an option for him, Matvev told CNBC. It's a stark statement, but it makes sense when you consider the implications of a Russian defeat. For Putin, losing this war would mean losing face on the international stage, as well as losing his grip on power at home. It would be a major blow to his image as a strong and decisive leader, and it could potentially lead to unrest within Russia itself. So, despite the apparent defeats in March, Putin is still pushing forward, determined to come out on top. It's a risky strategy to be sure, but Putin has always been known for his willingness to take bold and aggressive action. The question is, how much longer can this conflict continue before something gives? Let's keep watching and see what happens. Since the invasion began almost a year ago, 
The conflict has taken a horrific toll on the people of both countries. There have been hundreds of thousands of casualties, and much of Ukraine's infrastructure is in ruins. And yet, despite the high cost in human lives and suffering, Putin shows no signs of backing down. Instead, he seems determined to continue his ruthless pursuit of power at any cost. Imagine if you owned a house with 10 rooms and someone barged in, took two of those rooms and wrecked them. It's a nightmare scenario, right? But now imagine that the person who did this has another house with a thousand rooms. That's the situation Ukraine finds itself in right now. Despite beating back the Russian attempt to conquer their country, Ukraine is still under attack and their infrastructure is in ruins. Putin's strategy seems to be, if I can't have it, nobody can have it. It's a tragic situation, and the stakes couldn't be higher. The Russian invaders have initiated or are getting ready to initiate their proclaimed new attack in eastern Ukraine. Their objective is to seize control of the administrative regions of Donetsk and Luhansk. The increased intensity of the fighting in the eastern direction confirms the start of the Russians' new offensive. At the moment, we are witnessing the Russian offensive advancing slowly, but with significant losses. Unfortunately, this is creating a scorched earth zone in eastern Ukraine, as the battle lines have made the region uninhabitable. Ukraine's leadership has labeled this Russian aggression as a genocide against their people, as the Russian terrorists either kill Ukrainian citizens or completely destroy their towns and homes, making it impossible for anyone to live in these war-torn territories. It looks like the Russian terrorists aren't content with just wreaking havoc in Ukraine, they're setting their sights on destabilizing other European states too. That's right. Ukrainian intelligence has shared intel with the Moldovan government about potential attacks on their stability, and there are even reports that the infamous Wagner Group mercenaries are planning to stir up a new conflict in the Balkans. But wait, there's more. The threat of Russian nuclear terrorism is still very real and very scary. Ukrainian authorities have warned that the water level in the Kakovska Reservoir is rapidly decreasing due to uncontrolled water discharge at the nearby hydropower plant. This could lead to the area south of the dam being partially flooded, preventing Ukrainian forces from crossing the Dnipro River. It's like something out of a disaster movie, except it's happening in real life. Hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians and half a million acres of agricultural land are at risk of running out of drinking water. But the worst part, a nuclear disaster could be looming on the horizon if the cooling system of the Zaporizhia NPP fails due to the lack of water in the Kakovska Reservoir. This situation has caught the attention of the International Atomic Energy Agency, and rightfully so. The threat of a nuclear accident is nothing to be taken lightly. The aftermath of the war in Ukraine is nothing short of a harrowing tragedy. Almost a third of the country's land is littered with deadly landmines and other explosives, turning vast swaths of once beautiful terrain into a death trap. The scale of destruction is so immense that it is hard to even fathom, but the human cost is even more heart-wrenching. Can you imagine having to abandon your home, your community, your life because of war? It's estimated that a staggering 10 million Ukrainians, that's one-fourth of the entire population, will have to start from scratch, from finding a new place to live, to finding a new job, and rebuilding their entire lives. It's a daunting task, and the challenges that lie ahead for these individuals and their families are truly monumental. As we wrap up this eye-opening video, it's crucial to remember that the conflict between Ukraine and Russia is not just a political battle between two countries, but a humanitarian crisis that affects millions of innocent lives. We cannot stand idly by as families are torn apart, homes are destroyed, and lives are lost. So, let's take action and make our voices heard. Share this video with your friends and family, spread awareness on social media, and reach out to your local representatives to demand action. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more updates on this ongoing conflict.